Occupational Therapy and Oncology here. And my name is Madison, and this is Carly, and this is Abby. The National Cancer Institute indicates that cancer diagnoses will increase in the coming years with an estimated 22.2 million survivors by the year of 2030. Cancer is now considered a chronic disease, indicating the need of support and services throughout the survivor's lifetime. OTs can play a key role in oncology care by addressing <laughs> impairments and disabilities, along with the psycho psychological impact of cancer on the individual. OTs can play a key role in oncology care by addressing specific impairments and disabilities such as cognitive dysfunction, fatigue and poor endurance, and physical impairments and disabilities that then lead to functional deficits. Cognitive dysfunction is commonly termed chemo brain or chemo fog in this population and can present as cognitive problems related to memory, attention, information, processing speed, and organization. Due to prevalence and severity of cognitive dysfunction symptoms, it is imperative for OTs to provide treatment to minimize or remediate these symptoms. As far as fatigue and poor endurance, it was found that more than 30% of patients that are newly diagnosed with cancer will experience moderate to severe cancer-related fatigue in the first year after diagnosis. Cancer-related fatigue can limit an individual's performance in ADLs, work, leisure, or social activities, in addition to their overall quality of life. OTs can then implement structured activity modification and prioritization, as well as monitoring task-based based activity and energy patterns. Some common physical impairments from cancer include depression, anxiety, fear of recurrence, pain syndromes, peripheral neuropathy, sexual dysfunction, balancing gait problems, upper and lower quadrant mobility issues, lymphedema, bladder and bowel problems, stomachare, problems with swallowing or dysphagia, and communication difficulties. OTs addressing these impairments and disabilities have the ability to improve the overall quality of life of patients diagnosed with cancer and their overall functional status with ADLs and IADLs. Okay. So when we were researching, it talked a lot about psychosocial aspects of cancer. Cancer survivors have continued reporting a widespread dissatisfaction with their supportive care services. So cancer pa patients with cancer have supportive care teams, and it's just a variety of different health professionals that address different areas for them. But the most common unmet needs that they have felt um, were not being addressed involve psychosocial factors and everyday functions. So coping with emotions of fear, stress, anxiety, and gaining education to understand diagnosis and prognosis, treatment, and self-management of symptoms. So to talk about the psychological impact of cancer, in um, 2010, the National Health Survey results show that 10.1% of cancer survivors reported having poor mental health related quality of life. And that was compared with only 5.9% of individuals without cancer. And in our research, it talked a lot about anxiety and depression coming up in cancer patients, which you would probably expect. Um, with cancer, there are a lot of emotional reactions that happen with like different phases of denial <laughs> and intense fear. And all of that can eventually trigger anxiety that can get worse and depression. And with anxiety, um, they commonly have intrusive thoughts about recurrence of the disease, possible death, and disability. And with depression, one study talked about this was tied to body image issues, fatigue, weight loss, mastectomy and breast cancer, self-image, sex drive, um, surgical consequences such as colostomy also. And then there's also a social impact. The study that I liked the most was Van Roy. Um, they did a study with 150 cancer patients and it was qualitative. And I felt like it had some good information that the, can that the patients with cancer gave. So they talked about having um, an urge to escape the feeling of being a patient. They talked about 
how there was a decrease in social support over time. They felt like at first people were supportive of their of helping them with their new diagnosis, but then over time that just kind of fizzled out. They talked about how they struggled to proceed with life as normal. They felt socially excluded. Cancer was being a part of their social identity. A lot of their conversations that they would have even with people that weren't even that close to them were just about the cancer. And then they also were missing out on social events and then in turn missing out on a lot of conversations that people were having because they weren't going to those events. And then another burden for them with psychosocial is economic impact. Um, nearly all patients experience a level of financial problems no matter what their socioeconomic status is due to lack of insurance coverage for medical and social costs. So things that you don't really think about like transportation services, childcare, housekeeping services, non-prescription medications, and lost wages from cancer and treatment. And this is important because when financial needs are not being met, patients' overall functioning, treatment, and quality of life may decline. And one study talked about how patients are more likely to delay their medical treatment and like filling their prescriptions if they don't have the money, obviously, which is not good. So um, occupational therapists should be at the forefront of responding to the psychosocial and functional needs because OTs treat clients holistically, emphasize the mind, body, and spirit connection, and are experts in evaluating and maximizing client function. And current research involving OT and oncology concepts is mostly involving physical interventions right now. Further research is needed to examine psychosocial interventions. Okay, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the utilization of occupational therapy services throughout the cancer care continuum. We can see the need of OT and the benefits of OT in the cancer care from new diagnosis to survivorship. But research indicates that occupational therapy is underutilized in cancer treatment. Um, another common unmet service is related to daily functioning tasks. Um, in a study by Ross and colleagues, they determined that 39% of cancer patients did not receive satisfactory rehabilitation services. And this leads me to some of the common reasons for lack of utilization. Um, I found nine mentioned in most articles I read, and these are lack of awareness, lack of physician referral, lower education level of patients, the perception that rehabilitation services are inappropriate for individuals with cancer, difficulty knowing when and who to refer to, lack of evidence-based practice, age at time of diagnosis, a gradual onset of functional decline, and lack of resources. Lack of awareness plays into many of the following factors. The physician, patient, or caregiver can all be unaware or not understand what OT is, what OT does, or who OT serves. Lack of awareness can be linked to lack of physician referral, the perception that rehabilitation services are inappropriate for individuals with cancer, and difficulty knowing when and who to refer to. Lack of physician referral can be a large issue in many areas. Um, while Indiana doesn't require physician referrals, many states do, so this can greatly impact utilization in most states. Um, and then the perception that rehabilitation services are inappropriate for individuals with cancer also relates back to lack of awareness. Um, physicians, patients, and caregivers need to understand the benefits of occupational therapy and the cancer care continuum. Um, like helping with task modification, pain management, assistive technology, um, and many other things. And we can help improve this through education of both physicians and patients. Um, difficulty knowing when and who to refer to. Research shows that physicians feel there is lack of time for them to look into rehab needs since they're working on treating the actual cancer symptoms. Um, so it can be our job to advocate and educate physicians so that they know who to refer to and when to refer. Um, lack of evidence-based practices is another factor. Research needs to be done showing the effectiveness of skilled OT intervention and cancer care. There should be enough proof of 
the benefits of our services that people are confident in treating and advocating for themselves. And then age at time of diagnosis, often older adults feel that their limitations are permanent and may seek out, may not seek out services. Um, another one is gradual onset of functional decline. If the gradual onset is often looked over since it's not an abrupt change in functional status, like one they have with a current illness or injury, with gradual onset, individuals are less likely to recognize the need for rehab and so they may not seek physician referral, and then lack of resources of the patient, having trouble with payment or transportation. So all in all, a big issue we face in OT and oncology is lack of awareness. Um, it's important for OTs to recognize this and work to avoid this. Advocate, advocacy, education, and motivation are some ways we can address this and make our services known. Like we previously said, research is needed to promote the use of OT and cancer treatment to provide a better foundation and understanding of what we can offer through our services. Okay. There's our references. Oops. Any questions?